Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, my name is Andy, I am the commentator and this is episode number, I can't remember, of this FIFA Street, Rule the Street uh, mode playthrough that we're going to be doing. Now before we uh, continue uh, playing through the matches, just a quick thing I'm going to do first, I'm actually going to uh, improve my own stats. So you can see that I've got nearly 20,000 skills bills. In fact, before I do that, let me just check how much um, skills bills we need to um, to enter this Rule the Street uh, tournament. So we need 3,500 and a score rating of 45, which we've already got. As long as I don't go under 3,500 uh, skills bills, we'll be fine. So I'm just going to uh, bolster my stats a little bit. I'm already 88 ability, but... Um, I'm assuming 99 is the highest I can go, so I might as well, uh, might as well keep going a little bit till we uh, till we get to that point. If we uh, if we can indeed get to that point, well, it looks like we're not a million miles away here, are we? Um, yeah, not far off at all. Yeah, I, I don't know the height. 96. Yeah. Um, I tell you what, we'll just leave it at that. We'll stay at 96, and then we'll uh, we can maybe improve. Um, improve further later on in the uh, the run because um well it doesn't really matter i mean i suppose i suppose the quicker we become the best we can what am i talking about i don't know anyway one thing i do know though is that we're going to be uh, moving on now to the next city that we're on now at the end of the last episode i said it was mexico city which was a mistake so it's actually going to be berlin so we're sticking with the theme of european capital cities so first game is against the outlaws it looks like the badge to me, it looks like it's doing the Patrick Stewart face palm meme. If you're watching Patrick, I know you are. Hi, unfortunately, Huddersfield Town are not on this game, so apologies for that one, uh, my friend. Anyway, enough about Patrick Stewart. So we're going to pick the uh, friendly, uh, the team for this first friendly. Now, Danielson has yet to make his debut, and he's not going to make it here because I'm going to stick with the side that did so well in the last episode, which was Akotcha and Cisse. Quite like to coach it. I was going to say, speaking of um, Huddersfield Town, a coach. We played for Hull City, didn't we? Not Huddersfield. So, got that one wrong. Anyway, we're up against a blonde goalkeeper. Looks like Kevin Karanyi, uh, Luis Saha, and Antonio Cassano. So, there's definitely going to be a difficulty spike here. But hopefully, me being 96 ability should make up for that. Let's get on with it. Alrighty then, so if you're new to the series, first of all, I've run out, so I do apologise. Second of all, just going to explain how the uh, the series has worked up to this point. Uh, so basically, each city, we're doing the, so we're doing the rule the street mode. Um, so for that, we need to basically win the rule the street tournament in each of the 10 cities that are on the game. But as well as doing the rule the street tournament, we're also going to be uh, getting 100% completion for the, uh, for the game. So... Um, in order to do that, uh, we've got to win, in each uh, city that we visit, we've got to win seven friendlies, and then we've got to uh, win the Rule the Street tournament. Now, the way I'm doing it is, I'm splitting each city into two parts. This is part one of, um, of Berlin. So in the part one of each city, we do four friendlies. We then get a new uh, signing for the, uh, the squad. Um, for part two, we then do the remaining three friendlies. So we've done uh, all seven matches. All seven uh, friendly matches. We then get another new signing. So it's two new signings per city. Uh, we then we then do the Rule the Street tournament. So the second uh, part of each city is slightly longer than the first, generally. So obviously we're doing more matches. Um, also, if you, again, if you don't know this, the friendly matches are first to five goals. The... Um, and then the match ends. The tournament matches, the quarterfinals... Wow, that would have been an interesting goal. The quarterfinals and the semi-finals are three minutes a half. The final is five minutes a half. So the uh, tournament matches are guaranteed length. The friendly matches could go on forever. I think my longest friendly up to this point has been over ten minutes. So uh, not good to score five goals. Um, but we'll see how we uh, get on. Defending like that won't help. Just moving out the way. I do quite like, to be honest with you, I actually, uh, I forgot about this uh, playing, playing area. I do quite like the uh, the post basically being LED lights. I think that's quite a nice little touch. So we're playing in darkness and uh, the, posts are lit, the posts are part of the, uh, sort of the floodlight system, if you want to call it that. That was a dreadful skill. It's supposed to be 96 ability and I can't pull that trick off. So that's not very good. 
Right, two minutes in, and we've still not got a goal yet. Uh, one thing we do have, though, at this point, is a quiz question. Given the fact we're playing against Kevin Karanyi, um, so, Kevin Karanyi's quiz question is, Kevin Karanyi was eligible, he was a German international, he was eligible to play for four countries. Other than Germany, what were the other three countries that he could have played, could have represented at international level? Well, that's today's quiz question. What was Kevin, who could Kevin Karanya have played for at international level? Other than, um, hey, finally. Other than Germany, we obviously did represent, but then Germany have a, have a reputation in uh, recent years of... Players representing them that could have played for the countries. No, there's anything wrong with that. It's just an observation. It's not a criticism. But, you know, Miroslav Klose could have played for Poland. Lukas Podolski could have played for Poland. Uh, Ilkay Gundogan could have played for Turkey. As could Mesut Ozil and Sami Khedira. Jerome Boateng could have played for uh, Ghana. Um, other player could have played for somebody else. It'd be interesting to know. I think Mario Gomez could have played for Spain, I think. Um, it'd be interesting, actually, how would the German national team have turned out if all those players had played for somebody else, played for the other nation that they could have played for? I think Antonio... I want to say Antonio Rudiger could have played for somebody else, but I'm not... I'm not sure what I'm basing that on, really. Not not some kind of unknown... I may be, I may be, I may be right, maybe he could have done, but it, I can't think who it would have been off the top of my head. Unless I'm getting him and uh, Boateng mixed up, but I've already said Boateng, haven't I? I'm sure there's another player as well that could have played for somebody else in fairly recent years. Um, but I don't know who... Uh, Leon Goretzka, maybe? Is he Is he half um, half another national... Is he, could he have, he have represented somebody else? Um, Alfonso Davis does play for... He does actually... He does represent Canada, Canada doesn't he? I don't know if he's actually uh, eligible for Germany. He will be event. He will get German citizenship eventually, I would imagine, if he uh, if he hangs about. Leroy Sane, can he play for somebody else? Don't think so. Um, anyway, just hashtag just saying, just something to uh, something to wonder, just something to think about while you're trying to uh, make these friendlies seem a bit more fun. I do think I do think this game is getting more difficult. Uh, obviously, the opposition is getting stronger, but that unfortunately means the goalkeepers are getting stronger, uh, which for me is a little bit of a problem. Right, let's try and uh, scissor kick this into the top corner. There we go. No chance for the blonde keeper. Oh, I did actually look who it was. The last couple of replays wasn't paying attention. So who is it? Ah, Santiago Canizares, eh? Well, I wouldn't have said him, to be honest with you. I, I, did, I forgot he was on the game. I knew Casillas was on the game, because he's, uh, he's one of the players you can uh, you can sign. In fact, I think when I played through this game, despite the fact I... Uh, how shall I put this? I uh, made my scepticism of Casillas' ability known, shall we say, uh, on a previous video, which I'll probably get lost. That video's not yet on YouTube, so by the time it gets on there, if anyone cares enough... And watches it and hears me and cares enough. Though I'm making a bit of stick for that, but um, just my opinion. Um, but yeah, but despite that though, uh, I have um, when I played through this game originally when I got it and I uh, got to the end of it. I think Casillas was my goalkeeper. Certainly wasn't Brad Freed anyway. We've currently got in goal, um, so I knew he was on the game. I wasn't sure who else was. Um, was on, but I guess Cas I guess Canizara, Sorry, would be, would make sense. I think this was just a little bit too early for. Uh, for Victor Valdez, who kind of became uh, Casillas' understudy for a, a short while. The old Real Madrid versus Barcelona thing coming uh, coming into play again. I used to like when um, Barcelona, uh, sorry, um, the Spain national team was basically Barcelona and Real Madrid players, and Juan and Juan Capdevia. That was basically the uh, that was basically the Spanish national team. You had, you had Casillas from Real Madrid, obviously. Then Cap de Vier, I think, was playing for Villarreal, the left back. Then you had uh, Ramos and Pique, obviously, Real Madrid and Barcelona, respectively. Then the right back was um, Arbeloa, when he uh, Arbeloa, I think, from uh, from Real Madrid. Unless I'm thinking of somebody else. I think the, the right back could have been 
may have been Ramos actually, and then Puyol, Puyol and PK at centre back. I think we get my eras mixed up. Then obviously the three Barcelona players. Uh, you had, well, you had, you had before Busquets came along. You had you had Iniesta and Xavi, obviously two Barcelona players. Then you had uh, Xavi Alonso who was at Real Madrid, and then uh, Villa, Villa up front from Barcelona. Pedro from Barcelona, Fabregas again from Barcelona. I'm sure there's a Real Madrid player I've forgotten. No, I can't think who it was. I mean, there was I mean there was Guti, but he was a little bit before this year that I'm talking about. Anyway, I thought it was I thought it was uh, it, it was more interesting in, uh, in my head than uh, saying that out loud. So uh, let's move on. So we won that friendly. So now we're on to the Cobras. So you can see their progress one of eight. So by the end of this episode, we'll be at progress four of eight. Once we've won three more friendlies. Now, I have to say, I didn't think a Kocha did very much there. I also wasn't just wasn't uh, paying attention. So we're going to give a Kocha a break. So we're going to play Danielson. So we'll give him his debut. And we're also going to bring Trezeguet back in. So I didn't think I didn't think Cissé was great. In. I wasn't really paying much attention there, to be honest with you. Anyway, we're up against, looks like we're up against Tim Howard. Is that Andreas Hinkle, number uh, the 40 there? That looks like Mikel Silvestri in the middle. And once again, we've got Kevin Karanyi. I wonder if it is Andreas Hinkle. Be interesting. The uh, his star uh, rose and fall fairly quickly, didn't it? Ooh, I like the uh, neon uh, sign above the net. I've never seen that one. Never seen that before. Well, if I have, I've forgotten about it. Right, Danielson. Let's see how we get on. That was a good start. Cause that should have been a goal. Was that was that shockingly David Trezeguet there missing an open net? Looks like somebody's injured. Well, there's no injuries on this game, so I'm not quite sure what that's about. Again, I've never seen that. I've never seen the neon sign before. I've never seen somebody stay down really a long time after a tackle. The only time players tend to stay down in this game is the goalkeeper if uh, they get hit by a game breaker. And I've just mentioned it as well, but how come? How did David Trezeguet? Ooh, that was a good finish. How did David Trezeguet miss that open net? I know it was a tight angle, but even so. Yeah, so the goal for me, score past Tim Howard. So two American goalkeepers on the pitch at the minute. A bit underrated, I always thought, Brad Friedel. Did, um, bit of a, he, I mean, I know goalkeepers' careers go on a bit longer, but he was a bit of a late bloomer, wasn't he? I mean, when he was at Liverpool, he wasn't he wasn't amazing. And then he ends up at, uh, ended up at Blackburn and uh, really sort of came into his own. Especially later on in his career. I think he signed for Tottenham when he was like 38. Um, or something like that anyway, maybe wrong on that one. Right, come on, me. Ooh, that was a lucky. Obviously, Tim Howard uh, blossomed a lot quicker. He was uh, he was signed by a Premier League side in his uh, early 20s. About 23, 24, something like that. Talked about my uh, signing Tim Howard on uh, management games and uh, how it worked out for me. Are you pretty well? I've been winning the, uh, the, the Premier League with uh, Queen's Park Rangers and Tim Howard was my number one. So, um, yeah, I've got a lot of fun memories for Tim. Got a lot of time from, uh, from my uh, fictional management experiences. Obviously, I don't have any real ones. It may not surprise anybody. And the uh, triangle trick doesn't work. We get absolutely annihilated here. Despite the fact we're winning. How the hell has he come away with the ball there? Right, come on. Right, come on, Trezegate. You've got to put this one in, buddy. There we go. Open net. The other sort of goal. The other sort of goals I really like. Just squaring it for somebody for an empty net. That was Danielson, not Trezegate. I thought Trezegate had the. Uh, I didn't think Trezegate had the light coloured shorts on, but obviously he has. Oh, there we go. A similar goal to one I've just scored. So is that Andreas Hinkle? It is. I do like how Andreas Hinkle's got one of the better uh, player likenesses on this game. Some of the player likenesses are dreadful, but Andreas Hinkle's is really good, which I find quite interesting. Like, why, why is his good compared to some of the other players that, you know, with all due respect to Andreas Hinkle, they've had more, um, they're more established, they've had better careers than he's had. They don't get, really get a very good likeness. That was a good save. Yeah, it's been uh, tough opponents, these. I'm not be sorry when uh, this match is over. 
Trezeguet again. Does hunter damage Trezeguet because he was really good at first and then uh, no, he's pretty uh, he's pretty dreadful to be fair. Well, Andreas Hinkle's proving a problem player. The old pot of gold and again. Ooh, there we go. Really good finish from my good self, although my my overall is 96 compared to Andreas Hinkle's as 40. Does it seem to be much difference between the uh, the Berlin teams and the Rome teams? I wonder if we'll uh, see an improvement when we get to Mexico City. Can we get this game breaker away? Yes, we can. De Nielsen finds the bottom corner, makes it 4-1. Decent debut here for Danielson. He was a world record uh, when he signed for Real Betis. He was a, that was a world record transfer fee. So I was talking uh, earlier in the series about Hernan Crespo once being a world record transfer fee. Well, so was Danielson back in the day. One player who wasn't a world record transfer fee is uh, Mikel Silvestri, who just scored there. So that's good. One thing I've noticed about this game is I do seem to struggle more against defenders. When the opposition has defenders in their team, they seem to cause me more problems. Like, you know, I think it's, I think it's in the players that have caused me problems all, throughout this series. Stephen Carr, who's a right-back. Um, Steve Finnan, who's a right-back called Steve, who's Irish. Um, well, so Steve and... Steve, forget it. Um, you, know, you, you get the idea. Christian Vernt, Um I, I suppose Alan Smith is not a... I suppose Alan Smith's not a defender. Also, can we just take a time? Can we just take a moment to reflect on uh, David Trezeguet missing an open net there, or, or the keeper getting up and somehow saving it? Um, yeah, I think David Trezeguet. Uh, I don't say his days are numbered, but I hope it will be uh, itching to use him again. Sorry, Kevin, but lucky buddy. Right, if we can. Uh, come on, Trezeguet. There we go. That was a good finish. Redeemed himself there. Yeah, there was uh, Stephen Carr, Steve Finnan, Christian Vernes. There was another right back as well that was causing me problems. Andreas Hinkles caused me problems there. Sylvester has as well. Must be something about defenders. Who was that other guy that was everywhere? Was it Walter Samuel? There was one player, I remember playing against him, he was everywhere. He was blocking all my shots and then scoring the goals. But yeah, we seem to have, a, seem to have a bit of a, an issue with defenders. Anyway, on to the next game against the Piranhas. So half the way, half of the way through the uh, friendlies. Uh, right, I think we'll drop Trezeguet again because he was pretty average in that game. Kind of want to put Manish back in. You know what? I'll play Cafu because he's not playing for a while. So we'll give Cafu a run out. We'll sit with Danielson. So we'll go. Uh, we'll go for a Brazilian, and then we'll uh, we'll pick two Brazilian players to uh, play in this friendly. Now, if we look uh, up against here, it looks like Luis Sahari's back. I should know the guy in the middle is, and I don't. I don't know who the uh, first number forty is. And we're back up against Canazares. I've said the two goalkeepers, I found Canizares slightly better of the two, so uh, may struggle here, may miss having a finisher. But um, I am rotating the squad, trying to keep everybody happy, even though, uh, as I've said a million times on this playthrough, there's no morale stat on this game, and there's no fatigue stat. So you don't need to rotate your players, but I like to do it. I like to keep everybody uh, fresh and fit and interested. we we'll start again there from Danielson. Yeah, when um, when he yeah when when Daniel signed for Real Betis, it was a I think it was twenty two million. It was a world record transfer fee at the time, but I may be wrong. I may be wrong on that one. The fee, I know I know I'm not wrong on the uh, world record uh, fee. I just don't know what the fee was. I can't remember when they signed him actually. I want to say was it nineteen ninety eight? It was after the world. I think it was after the World Cup in ninety eight. I think. Just really odd that a club like Real Betis, who, so you know I. I I don't know the history of Real Betis, so you know, if I may be speaking out of turn here, but um, you know, a, a club that a club that really, you know, certainly in my lifetime, haven't really been synonymous with winning anything, mainly because of the uh, you know the dominance of the El two El Clasico teams. T t you know, to splash out a world record transfer fee was was quite something really at the time. Both quite like Real Betis, I think mainly because their kit's green. Or, you know, green and white, but you know, the, not many, not many teams have a home kit that's green, so it's just something a bit different. I think that's why I quite like them. Maybe wrong on that one. Never, uh, 
I was talking about being uh, management games the other one was Queen's Park Rangers. I've never been Real Betis. Well, maybe it's a team I should be. I don't know. I have a bit of resurgence in real life recently. And I think they are currently, as time record, as I'm recording this, I think they're fifth or sixth in the table. I think Manuel Pellegrini is the manager now, isn't he? I may be wrong on that one. Obviously, Nabil Fekir is kind of... Uh, I think he, Nabil Fekir is starting to come good. It's always a bit of a random sign. He was linked with he was linked with everyone. Again, no disrespect to Real Betis, but he was linked with everyone and the mother when he was at Leon, going to all these like you know Champions League teams, and then he ends up at then he ends up at Real Betis. And it just seemed to kind of come out of nowhere that one. But um, that's where he is. Right, can we get another game breaker away? Danielson scored his last one. He scored another one. I have to say, this uh, this playing arena is growing on me. I've always said I prefer the uh, kind of one that just looks like a, a an, air, an area of street that's been cordoned off, whereas this one's a proper sort of, like, pen. Onto a better... Uh, like a... You know, like a... Yeah, like an area... Like, a, you know, an actual designated area for football. And I tend to prefer the sort of street setting... Uh, street setting settings. <laughs> if that makes any sense. How did that not go in? Let me explain that one to me. Has Cafu actually done anything in this match? Has he even touched the ball? Is that Cafu who's just slid in there? Yeah, we do need to... Uh, I think the squad does need... Even though I'm making signings all the time, I don't feel like the squad needs freshening up. I need to move up. I think Cafu and Trezeguet may need to uh, be moved on, unfortunately. I quite like the rest of the squad, but those two are not really... Uh, doing much at the minute. Right, here's the guy who I should know it is, and he's passed it up to Sahar. Didn't go in anyway. That trick never works, not like it keeps happening. That Cafu though, sliding in and then not winning it back, even though he's, even though his special stats tackling. Right, Cafu, please do something. Sweet like a cyclone. Oh, she's sweet, but a cyclone. Right. Um, come on, me. Ooh, good save. Two more goals to get. Uh, if this was a friendly match now, we'd be on... Uh, sorry, a tournament, Roller Street tournament match would be in the second half now. Ooh, lovely finish there. Is that Lewis Sart? No, it's Joseph Yobo. Okay, again, defenders causing... I should have known, really. Defenders causing problems. I thought Sal was the guy in the hoodie. Uh, yep, so Joseph Yobo causing me problems. It was good, Joseph Yobo. What happened to Joseph Yobo? He was at Everton for quite a long time, wasn't it? I think they signed him from, I want to say, Marseille with no confidence whatsoever. Yeah, it was all right, Joseph Yobo. I used to uh, think it was decent. Him and Sylvan Distan. Was it him and Sylvan Distan? It was like a partnership. It wasn't this, it wasn't this time, was it? Who was it? I don't know. Anyway, um, what they're doing though is that, yeah, I like Joseph Yobo. He was decent. Of course, Nigeria on this game, so, um, gonna get Nigerian players. Like Joseph Yobo. Talked about the Nigerian uh, Premier League in depth in the previous episodes, so we'll not be doing that again. I don't know which uh, Nigerian... I wonder if he did play in the Nigerian League. I probably did. He's probably one of those players that never actually... You know, he's from Nigeria and actually played in the Nigerian League and came to a, a, French, a French youth team or something like that. But I may be completely wrong. He may have played for Plateau United or something like that. I don't know. I like Plateau United's kit, actually. They're, they're mainly green. They're like Real Betis. Mainly green. I must, I must like green. I should have made my kit green, shouldn't I, rather than... Uh, Black and like sky blue. I do like I do like black and sky blue as a colour combination. But yeah, maybe I could have gone for green. Paid homage to uh, Plateau United and Real Betis and all the other green. Other the green wearing clubs. What, what other clubs wear green? Primarily green. That was dreadful goalkeeping. How did that stay out? Oh yeah, it didn't. There we go. Yeah, what other clubs primarily wear green? There's uh, Beijing Guan. That I can think of. I don't know why that's the first one that comes to mind. But there's going to be a, there's going to be an obviously a more obvious one than that. But that's the first one I can think of. Yeah, Beijing Guan. Um, 
I think that's why I like Palermo as well, because their uh, their main colour kit was pink. I don't know if it still is. I'm assuming it still is, but they were such a fall from grace, sadly. It's the days of uh, Cavani and Dybala, etc. Oh, what a lovely finish that was. Well, in Cafu, by the time you did something. Uh, yeah, Beijing Guan, Forest Green Rovers. And I do have a Forest Green Rovers shirt, which I've said before in the uh, series. So again, my love of green coming out. Uh, not, like, not like the green in uh, black, Adam, but that's, that was uh, that was something else. No, I don't want to save the game, but thanks for asking. I want to uh, keep thinking about teams that play in green, actually. Right, we're next up against Reading, so the final friendly. Uh, and we're going to go for... No, Nigeria playing green, not they, because there's green on their flag. So, we'll see with Danielson. Uh, and we're going to recall Manish, because he hasn't really done anything wrong, Manish. He hasn't, he hasn't played yet in this episode. So we'll go Danielson and Manish. So let's do that. And we're up against Tim Howard again. It looks like... Is that Andrea Pirlo and Kaka? With a lower rating than Antonio Cassano and a lower rating than... Well, the same rating as Sean Wright Phillips. And no offence to Sean Wright Phillips, but it, it was... I don't think in any universe is he as good as Kaka or Andrea Pirlo. So, uh, well, I guess we'll find out. I think it's Kaka and Andrea Pirlo. Who else could it be? I guess we may find out if I can hear the commentary or they score a goal. I can't hear the commentary. So, uh, it's unlikely I'll get it from that source. Yeah, Sporting Lisbon, they play in green. That, that should have probably been the first team that I said. I'm trying to think of teams that play in green. Um, Sassuolo, would you say that was mainly green? Uh, there's a team in France as well, isn't there? Called Saint yeah, Saint Etienne. <laughs> uh, they their their club their kit's mainly green. Um, and I nearly made the uh, fatal mistake there of uh, created a portmanteau word out of club and kit. Just be very very careful if you're going to do that. Don't want to get those two words uh, muddled together. Um, that's plain green. It's got to be more close. I've never, I've never named so far. That could be the quiz question. I mean, name, name ten teams whose home kit's green. Uh, yeah, Beijing Guan, Forest Green Rovers. Um, I'm going to go for Sassuolo, Real Betis, Sporting, uh, Sporting Lisbon or Sporting Club Portugal, whatever you call them. Um, what's the other one that I said? There's another one. Uh, who's the other one that I said? I can't remember. Isn't it? Saint Etienne, that was it. Um, who else is there? Is anyone in Holland? Ado Den Haag. I suppose that's predominantly green. Um, anyone in Germany? I suppose what? Wolfsburg and Werder Bremen? Are they are they mainly green or are they mainly white? I was just so I, I mean I'd associate them with green. I, mean, I think when uh, I mean I remember Werder Bremen won the league in 2005, was it? 2004, 2005, one or the other? It was 2000. I think it was 2004 actually. Um, I'm sure them. I'm sure their home kit was. Um, I'm sure the home kit was. Uh, green with a white sort of dangle stripe down the middle of it. And I may be wrong on that one. Come on, Manish, do something, buddy. So at the minute, yeah, I knew it was going to happen. At the minute, we're, getting, we're either getting fouled or we're blocking our own shots. Nelson's actually doing something, which is nice. Yeah, this, this, I don't, yeah, Reading, isn't it? It feels like they've got about 30 players, which is slightly annoying. Which sure one's supposed to be three against three. I feel like I'm having to beat a player more than once. In terms of national teams that play in green, obviously Mexico, as I said, Nigeria. This is green on the flag. This is green on the Mexico flag, isn't there? Under Nielsen. I think I've laboured the green point a bit, but I, I, do, I do think there's not, you know, if, if you named other colours. I mean, it's not a primary colour, is it, green? But I suppose if you named other colours. Um, most of the colours you could name quite a few teams for, but green, green less so, I feel. I really, do, I really do need a new goal. Just not, nothing to do with uh, Green, but I really do need a new goalkeeper because he, he just, he couldn't catch a, he couldn't catch a, he couldn't catch a cold at the minute. How he just, he just, everything's just bouncing off him, and then instead of then coming out and just diving on it, he's just like standing there, and we're like, I'm going to do like goal line clearances for no reason. So, uh, 
Did I say Howard? I meant Friedel. If I said if I said Howard, I meant Friedel. I, I can't. Believe, I don't know if I did not. What a lovely turn that was. Well, together we give the ball away, and then they threw on goal. That's how it, see, like there, for example, instead of just diving on it, he boots it long. Why? Well, we did get a shot out of it, to be fair, but... I knew what was going to happen. I was, I was trying not to tackle him. I was trying to back off. Still no goal. Don't want to waste this game breaker. I haven't wasted one yet. I don't think I've wait. I need to use it, though, soon. Once again, despite the fact I'm so much quicker than everybody else, they catch me up. Right, this should uh, fly in the bottom corner from Manish, who I forgot was playing. Yeah, catch me with a partner for Danielson. We may have to go Danielson and Kotcha. Is this the last friendly? It is, isn't it? And then I've got the uh, the new signing to make. I'll try and improve the team a little bit. That was unlucky. Right, 3-0, so I think we're going to win. It's just been a little bit of a ball ache. You know what team is playing green? Um, Plymouth, Plymouth Argyle. The fans are called the Green Army, so I suppose a bit of a clue there. And it's not because they, uh, it's not because they're jealous of everyone else. I think it's because, uh, although given how far they've got to travel for every away game, I, don't, I can't understand why they would be, uh, they would be jealous. But Plymouth, Plymouth's one of those places or one of those grap, one of those teams that they're not near. That, well, they are near some teams, but virtually every other team. It's like even 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 their local derbies are like you know 100 miles away off well not quite 100 but you know in the local derbies are like 50 to 70 miles away whereas most most local derbies it's like you know 10 to 15 miles down the road or whatever but their local derbies are a mile away. like you know even Plymouth to like Portsmouth is a long way <laughs> it's just one of those places that's a long way from everywhere the only real local derby they've got is Exeter. I suppose Torquay, but they're not in the league anymore, unfortunately. Well, they may, I think they're doing quite well in the league, I may be wrong though. Anyway, 5-0, that was nice and straightforward. We've talked about teams that play in green. We've uh, not saved the game. Our rep's gone up, but we're still a prodigy at the minute. Right, so we're four uh, friendlies down. So, progress 4 of 8, so in the next episode we'll be doing the next 3 friendlies and the rule of the street mode and that'll get us 8 of 8 progress. But for now we just need to get a new sign-in. So as I've said before, you can see there, we can go for Robert Perez or Christian Vieri and we won't have to pay any skills bills. If we want to sign David Beckham or Saviola or Puyol, then we have to pay the skills bills and then we then have to win the match. If we don't win the match, we don't get our skills bills back. So I've been saying all the way through the series, I'm only going for players that are uh, unlocked. Players become unlocked as you move through the game. So let's have a look and see who we can get our hands on, because we do need something to actually improve the team. Ooh, Frank Lampard and Fernando Torres are now available, and they go for one of those twice. Let's just see who else there is. But... Ooh, Casillas. Well, I said about getting a new goalkeeper. Ooh, Freddy Adu. None of these are, these are the first time all these have become available. Michael Ballack as well, he's not been available yet. So let's have a look at Michael Ballack. So he is shot accuracy in 76. Uh, right, I think I'm going to go for Casillas, even though I... Uh, I'd really like Fred Yadu though. Oh, he's tricks. That's annoying. I was hoping, I was hoping he was going to be pace. Yeah, we've already got a two... We've already got two tricksters and they're a Kotcher and... Uh, and Danielson. I don't really want to get rid of either of them, because the Kotchers are... Apart from me, Akotch is our best player in terms of rating, and we've only just signed a Nielsen. And he's been pretty good. That's a shame. I really wanted Adu. That is a shame. Um, right, how good's Casillas? See, 78 Casillas. I think Friedel's 50, so. I'm going to go for Casillas, but just before I do, I'm just going to have a quick look at these two. So Torres, shot accuracy in 71. That's a, that's a great haircut. Uh, and Lampard is shot power in 74. Trust me, they won't mind either of those, because Trezeguet's, Trezeguet's really struggling. Uh, and he's, he's shy accuracy. Uh, but no, we'll go for Casillas. We will go for Casillas while we can get him. Makes my mind up for me. So yeah, we'll get Casillas in. Uh, and the team we're going to pick to unlock Casillas, we'll stick with Danielson. We'll go Danielson and Akotcha, let's see how they get on. So we'll go for the two players whose uh, highest ability is Tricks. Okay, so Casillas, and we're up against Hinkle, and two players, I don't know who they are. Let's go. 
think this is going to be a good signing, because we've had Friedel quite a while now. This is the second time you, you kind of reach a point with your goalkeeper where you... It just kind of becomes obvious you need an improvement. And we're back at Rome as well, which is always a good uh, a good venue to uh, to be at. We've said they played from Rome so far. Uh, Danielson was from Rome. Uh, and Trezeguet was from Rome. So that's good. And for some reason, a real bright light shining against my wall. I don't know what the hell that is. I don't know if Friedel could have held that, but again, just more evidence that we need to replace him. Well, this guy is who's catching up with me, but he's, uh, well, he's not catching up, he's outspeeding me, isn't he? Did he also just run away from the ball? Why would you do that? That is one thing I do find frustrating about this game. Uh, here comes the stepper, and here comes the foot roll, and here comes 1-0, hopefully. Nope. Maybe yes, if I can squeeze it in, nope. Yeah, I think you reach a point with goalkeepers where, um... See, how did, how did he how did he parry the first one but hold the second one there? Yeah, we, it was the same when we had uh, we had Jlyko Kalac. You get to a point with goalkeepers where you just get a sense you need to... That's getting boring. You just get a sense that you need to replace them. Like, they do well at first and then you, then you just kind of start... Little mistakes start creeping in or, you know... They start parrying things. I mean, Kalach was really good at first, and he just started to. Uh... Well, I don't know if he was really good, but he, you know, I didn't have any complaints about Kalach. And then he just started to make the odd error. Um, and I think it's time to replace him. I think that was the case with Friedel, because in the last, the last city, which was Rome actually, yeah, we, he had a few, uh, he had a few dodgy moments. I thought, I thought, yeah, I think it's time we uh, maybe uh, look for somebody slightly better. So here we are, trying to get Ike to see us. Although so far, in this match, he's done pretty well. Um, so maybe, uh, maybe I've been a bit too harsh on him. Oh, what a lovely finish that was. Well done, JJ. Just about the quiz question before I give the answer. In fact, I can't remember the answer. So, um, oh yeah, I can. I, th I think I can remember the answer. So yeah, uh, Kevin Karanyi was eligible to play for four national teams. Uh, so it was Germany we did play for. Who were the other three? Just a reminder of uh, of the quiz question there. Be like Adnan Yanazai. I think Adnan Yanazai are eligible for five teams. But I may be wrong. I'll check that. That may be the next, uh, that may be the next quiz question. I don't know who those five teams were. I can remember... I think they were... Well, I, I can have a guess who they were, but... Yeah, I think it was... I think it was five. Yeah, I think it was five, and, and, uh, Yanazai. I don't think who they were, but I think I know who they were. If it was five, definitely, I definitely know three of them. And then I'm, the other two, I'm fairly confident with as well. But uh, well, certainly one of them, anyway. It's at least four that it was eligible to play for. Anyway, good goal from Danielson. The coach is setting him up. Still got the game breaker, of course. No, that's just your left foot of Danielson. Not quite this time. Doesn't matter what foot you kick with on this game. They just both everyone's equally as uh what's the um what's the word for when you uh, when you when you're equally comfortable with both hands it's ambidextrous isn't it what's the word for equally comfortable with both feet whatever that word is whatever whatever uh, that word is that's what all the players are in this game right come on jj make it three buddy You know, fired into the uh, archway. I do like. I don't keep saying it, but oh, we got the ball stuck in the net. I don't keep saying it. But I do really like this playing area. I think it is my favourite. I'm looking forward to. Uh, I'm looking forward to the next transfer match. I wouldn't mind getting Lampard or Torres. It'd be quite an quite a good uh, a good improvement. But I think, to be fair, out of all the players that we've got that maybe needs replacing, I think. I just don't want to say this. I think it's probably going to be Cap. I think it's probably Cafu that needs replacing. Oh, that's a lovely goal, Danielson. I think it would be Cafu that I'd probably want to get rid of. Which, if we get rid of Cafu, we need a we need someone whose high skill is tackling. I've said before that each on the on the six uh, the six players I want in my squad, I want somebody that I want to have um, all the the five different skills. I want somebody who's the strongest on each one of those in the squad. So I can't have more than two, which is why I didn't want to sign Adu, because I, I didn't want more than two players 
whose highest skill was uh, Tricks, which I've currently got, and I didn't want to replace either of them. So at least with Lampard or Torres, we could either replace one of the two Tricksters, or we can, uh, or they can replace. If it was Lampard, it'd be replacing Cisse. And if it was Torres, he'd be replacing um, Trezeguet. I have to say, Friedel, I think I think Friedel's been pretty good at this match. It seems a bit of a shame that we're going to be replacing him <laughs> when we score another goal, which I'm assuming we're going to. I can't see them. Uh, I can't see them losing five four. The uh, transfer matches are the same as the. Um, that was pulled by me there. Transfer matches are the same as the uh, friendly matches. That it's first to five. Not like the tournament matches, which are of course timed, as we know. Which we'll see in the next episode when we do the Roller Street tournament. We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves there because we need to get this match finished with first. And we're just starting to. Uh, there goes the bright light on the wall again. Can't you see the bright light shining on your wall? Yes, I can. I think it's my. Uh, I think it's the sun shining through my empty bird feeder. And that's what it is, man. Maybe wrong. Ooh, that would have been a poor goal. And they gone in. Alright, come on, JJ. Ooh, stonewall penalty. I've seen that trick before. The Stonewall. Good name for a trick, I have to say. You did well here, Friedel. It's a shame to, uh, shame to replace him, but such is life. That's what we do. Lucky Kotcha. I'll nip that, though. Thanks for that. <laughs> Not the greatest uh, bit of defending you've ever seen. Ah, oh dear, if this, was a, if this was a tournament match, it'd be over in uh, 10 seconds. Instead, we've got to keep grinding away. Trying to get this fifth goal. I don't know if it's a good thing that this match has taken me a long time. Because I'm trying to sign the goalkeeper, and... Um, so, so the, the longer he keeps me out, I suppose in some ways, the better. Because it kind of suggests I'm getting a good player. But um, it does get a little bit frustrating now that we can't seem to... Oh, how many shots we've had? I'm interested just to see that, actually, at the end of the match. How many shots? I, I don't feel like we've really peppered the goal. But yet, this match is taking a long time. We just can't seem to find that, that fifth goal. This is it now. We'll score this time. Nope. Saved it again. Right. I'm going to go, uh, is it going to be 4-1? Nope. And that was a pass, apparently. Alright, come on, me. And once again, yep, yeah, see, they lose the ball and then always have a player back. I don't, I don't know how they do it. Can we squeeze it in from the tight angle? No, we can't. Yeah, this match is starting to get on my nerves a bit, actually, now. How do, you, how do you win the ball back? Somebody explain that one to me. Can we please just win the ball back? That would be nice. Let's try and get, a, let's try and get the combo going. Then we can... Uh, yeah, that wasn't a trick. Try and get a comp... See, how do you win the ball back? Because somebody just explain it to me. Because at the minute... There we go. They were always going to score eventually. Hinkle again. The problem with the defenders, in particular right backs, continues. Can this match now end? Now they've scored, because it's starting to get a little bit... It is starting to become a grind now. We're nearly eight minutes in. Now I've needed, I feel like I've needed one goal for about five minutes. Well, at least we've got a game break, because that's good. Don't want to waste it, though, so we'll try and make sure we, uh, we're not going to get hacked down before we use it. How do you win the ball back? Can somebody please just tell me? Right, here we go. Come on, JJ. Put us out of our misery, buddy, with your orange boots on. Firing past the orange shirt at Ika Casillas. How many shots did we have there? I'm interested to uh, to see. But before we look at that, the answer to the quiz question about Kevin Karanyi's uh, birth certificate. So he was eligible to play other than Germany. He could have played for Brazil. He could have played for Panama. Or he could have played for Iran. So, um, 37 shots. I'm sure we've had more than that in the past, but given how long that match went on. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a bit of a long one. Not a great shot conversion rate there, then. Yes, we've got Casillas now, so that's good. So he'll uh, probably probably see us through to the end of the uh, end of the series now, actually, I would imagine. 
Unless we sign Buffon, he's the only keeper I can think of that may, that may, that I think we can sign that may be better. I'm not sure Buffon is better actually, to be honest. I think Casillas' uh, stats are better. Anyway, yes, I will save the game now. Yep, so that was the, uh, that was Ike Casillas being signed. That was the Kevin Karanyi uh, birth certificate conundrum solved. And that is the end of this episode. So if you enjoyed this episode, then um, you must enjoy uh, talking about teams that play in green shirts. So please like and share the video if that is the case. You can also leave a comment on the video should you choose to that. Please let me know your favourite team uh, that plays in a green shirt. Uh, while you're here on YouTube, if you want to head on over to the channel, The Uncommentator. Oh, very good. You'll find the rest of the videos in this playlist when they eventually appear on YouTube. You'll also find playlists and other games and videos, etc. that I have played for. You'll find a video of Kenny Omega as well if that's the sort of thing that you're interested in. But join me next time. We're going to be moving on to the uh, second part of... The Ruler Street mode uh, for Berlin, the city of Berlin. We're going to be doing the Ruler Street tournament in Berlin and finishing off that particular city. But anyway, at that point, for now from me, it is Sayonara.